Chapter 29. Truck Stories. I have enough truck stories to fill an entire book. Hopefully, I can do them justice in just this one chapter. Truck stories are from my many experiences having to do with the villager truck. I wish I was a better storyteller because these experiences are well worth the time to put them down on paper. They come from a very important time period in my life, the late 60s and early 70s. Acquiring the truck is the topic of Chapter 28. These stories come from events that happened over the next five years that we had the truck. The hearse. Before we start with villager truck stories, there was a predecessor to it. It was a 1952 Pontiac hearse. It belonged to our drummer, Wayne Pichon. His dad was a mechanic and had fixed it up to reasonable conditions, so we had something to use for our band. We used it for a year or so. Wayne never let anyone other than himself drive it. It was a standard shift on the column and a straight eight engine, not a V8. We could get all of our equipment in it, plus all four of us, so we could get to and from our gigs together. That was three of us in the front bench seat and one bill scrunched up in the back. We got to be well known as the band with the hearse. It was constantly in need of repairs to keep it going, and Wayne was always mad because none of the others in the band would come over to his house and help work on it. We used it until it finally broke down and was beyond repair. Wayne got himself a used Ford station wagon and carried his drums around in it. Wayne went on to college at Eastern Illinois in Charleston. After about a year, we replaced him with my cousin, Mel Hoax. On to the babysitter. In 1970 and 71, Marilyn drove the GTO to school at the U of I and I drove the truck to work at Bone. I remember many times I would take Michelle on the way and drop her at the Little People's Nursery, which was on Jackson behind the Y. Michelle was old enough to sit on the engine cover, which was right in front and next to the driver's seat. This is not as safe as things are today. I hate to think about it, but even before this, I took her to a sitter on North Vermilion next to Carson's drugstore when she was still carried around in a car seat that we carried her from the house to the truck in and then sat her and it on the engine cover. Oh my, I would never even think about doing something like that today. But like many adventures from the past, I can say that we survived. Going to lunch. Having the truck at work, which was bone, meant that several of us could get in it at noon and go to lunch together. I remember one of those days when about six or eight of us piled into the truck and we headed out of the parking lot toward Dale's Tavern for the Blue Plate Special. At that time, the factories on Voorhees Street were running full tilt and getting out of the parking lot into traffic was sometimes difficult. Once in a while, some good guy from Heisters down the street would let us out into the line of cars. Well, we just got out onto the street and the truck ran out of gas. Oh, no! It was not going to be good to hold up all of those people going out to lunch, and the plant workers only had a half-hour lunch break. The horns were blasting. My passengers were all very nervous about holding up that line of cars. Within about 10 seconds, I went into action. I had done this before since the gas gauge was stuck on full. I pulled the two-gallon gas can out from under the driver's seat and jumped out of the truck. I poured the gas in the fill cap on the side of the truck and jumped back in. I got a great round of applause from the drivers in the cars behind me and lots of laughs from those on board. Several of my passengers going to lunch sat in folding lawn chairs that I carried on board. One of those passengers was Margot Lewis. She was the switchboard operator and always dressed like she was Marilyn Monroe and very cool. She had a tight and short dress on that day and was seated comfy in a lawn chair. Just as I turned the corner to head down to Dale's, I heard a crash. I turned my head around to see Margot flat on the floor with her legs straight up in the air and laughing her head off. She and the chair had flipped over. Then they all started to join in the party. Everybody always talked about the fun they had in that old truck. Fun, fun, fun.